my name is Caitlin Parent, and I'm going to be talking about a few cases of police brutality. In the past few years, there has been an estimate of about 776 people that were killed by police, and approximately 161 of those people were unarmed. There has been a few cases where African American women have been victims. On December 25th, Betty Jones was mistakenly gunned down in front of her home by a Caucasian police officer who was responding to an emergency call involving her young neighbor. On November 18, 2015, Tierra Thomas was fatally shot and killed by her ex-husband, Officer Hamad. And on July 13, 2015, as we all have heard about Sandra Bland, it all started when she was pulled over for turning without using her turn signal by State Trooper Brian Insinia. Three days after her arrest, she was found dead in her jail cell. Officials in Waller County claim she hung herself with a plastic bag, but yet the scenario just doesn't add up. Out of hand, there has been 89 reported incidents where our African-American fathers, sons, uncles, grandparents, and uncles have been victims. Roy Nelson died in the hands of Hayward police officers. Officers determined that Roy needed an involuntary psychiatric hold and put him in the back of their police car, forcing Roy into a leg restraint after which he died. In my hometown, Detroit, Michigan, Terrence Kellum was shot and killed after, after an officer from the Fugitive Task Force claimed he felt threatened. Freddie Gray, he died from injuries sustained during a pretty long ride in a police van while handcuffed and shackled to the floor. Hi, my name is Anna Pathavong. I'm Laotian American. The topic of police brutality is kind of a controversial topic right now, and I feel like we should do something to like prevent it. And I feel like the police officers they have higher authority, so they take advantage of the system. Hi, my name is Michaela Greer. I'm an African American. And I believe that police brutality is unacceptable and that there is some corruption in um, the police system as well as the justice system. And I feel that it's not taking of notice because off, um, officers are used to having high amounts of power and no one asking like why they did this or why they did that. They're not used to you know being confronted and with the age of technology rising, they're not used to having been caught with um, video evidence or audio evidence that they were in the wrong. And with that, I feel that we need to address it and either they need to do more training and you know, enforce the fact that, hey, you know, even though you have this amount of power, you need to use better judgment and not just assume either by prejudice or whatever information you got about the suspect that you have or whatever fear you have of whoever you're dealing with, whether it be their race or whatever, you shouldn't judge that and you should wait until you have the facts before you act the way you do. Hello guys, my name is Adam Baraka. I am, I am Palestinian American. Um, I believe that is, this is actually a pretty big issue. Um, you know, a lot of events happen here and there that are, I guess, unexplained. And I feel that police, I guess, overreact or overanalyze situations because of stereotypes and prejudices that are created just from like the general environment. You know, like with dark, you know, darker skin usually you know, live in you know lower socioeconomic areas, and when people are using in these impoverished areas, they, I, I think they just tend to generalize the population based on just different cases of, you know, crime and stuff. So I feel that it leads to a type of overreaction when dealing with something that may not even be a problem, leading to irrational behavior. Uh, I, I do believe it's a problem and it needs to be fixed somehow. I'm an African-American male. And the topic is police brutality. I feel as though it's underrated in our society. And I feel as though people need to be more vocal about it. You see it now on the news. Like it's more occurring now. But I, I feel like 
growing up in my neighborhood, we've dealt with police brutality time after time. Um, I feel as though you should not abuse your authority as a police officer. And I feel as though it is other ways you can de detain a situation without using brute force. Um, for instance, um, I had a friend that I grew up with. He uh, passed away. And, you know, police, they were on the scene. They weren't, um, they weren't as sympathetic. And, you know, a lot of people were out there. It was a lot of mixed emotions. And, you know, as opposed to detaining the situation, the police escalated the situation in a way. Got people riled up. And it ended up being a fight between the police and the people of the community. Um, I feel like. There are good police officers in the city, but at the same time, I feel like it's always victim. We are always the victim of police brutality. And when I say we, I mean African-American males, African-American females. I feel like it goes both ways in my community. Okay. Often police officers agree there are instances of excessive force. However, due to the police code of silence, officers tend to ignore or overlook brutality done by fellow officers. The following recording is of an officer being interviewed about blacks and police brutality. He declined being interviewed on tape from fear of retribution by his fellow officers. Okay. When do you think police officers should use deadly force?
that's why things happen in other communities. A lot of people, especially, you know, a lot of times out in the suburbs, they see a group of African American men, young men come out there and they figure right off the bat they're out here to do something wrong or you know, they got some type of criminal record or something like that, you know. And that's why, you know, I always try to tell young guys, it's not a lot of times what you do is what somebody else has done in the past and somebody preconceived notion about how you are just because of what they see on TV. You know, because a lot of times you say you're black and we go out anywhere in the summer and something they can think, you know, you out there do no good or whatever, you know, so it's hard. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take quite long that I'm going to be around. It's a cultural thing where black folks, a lot of black folks just don't, just don't like the police, you know, and then, you know, some of it, some of it is, is, is some true feelings, you know, stuff has happened to them, but they figured they didn't do anything, you know, and a lot of times people have done something or figured somebody did something and they were wrong at the time, well, I mean, it's one of those things, I mean, it's going to take a long time for, you know, the African American community, and it's not everybody in the African American community. You know, a lot of times we deal with people we see all the time, and a lot of times the law abiding citizens, we really don't have any contact with them. So, most of the folks you see on TV are the ones that, for whatever reason, not all of them, but you have some type of contact with the law all the time. They can always mess with them, which in some cases is true for the young black males, you know. So, that's why I try to tell you that you got a lot of times you go out here and you have all your paperwork, you know, your seatbelt, you know, drive speed limit. Because no matter where you go, especially outside the city, they're going to see you, put on people in the car, nine, nine times out of ten, something wrong, they're going to pull you over, check you out, so make sure your stuff is right. You know? Just because they see the number of people in the car and the black face, a lot of times, you know, it's a good message. Thank you.